This is an English guy to learn in Swedish. Hello and welcome back. In this episode, we will look at the definite forms of nouns, both in singular and plural. This is actually very much easier than the inflection to plural, but will vastly expand the ways you can inflect a noun. The declinations that we have talked about earlier are much less important now. What we have to keep looking out for, though, is the gender. So we now know how to say one thing and several things in Swedish. But how about the thing, or this thing, or those things over there? So on top of covering the definite forms of nouns, we will take a glance at the concepts of here and there. Let's start with just the simple definite form, regardless of wherever it's here or there. Contrary to English, Swedish doesn't have a word for the, but instead inflect the noun by adding a suffix. In singular, it's as simple as t for t words and n for n words. If the noun already ends on a vowel, like ett hjärta, you will just add the t, hjärtat. Or if you take a look at the uh, n-word, en flaska, flaskan. However, if the word end in a consonant, we will add either ett or n, depending on the gender. Ett horn, hornet. En sak, saken. There's two small exceptions to this. Sometimes, when an N word ends with an R, you still just add N and let the R be almost silent. En tiger. Tigen. This is not always true though. En sommar. Sommaren. However, it should be noted that when spoken, it's not uncommon that people will pronounce the summer as sommar, which is fine, and most people will probably not notice the error even when spelled. The second exception occurs when you have a T word ending with an I. Then you add ett and not t, ett bi, biet. Definite plural is even simpler. There's basically only two exceptions. So generally, whatever the indefinite plural form is, add na to the end. Flaskor. Flaskorna. Stolar. Stolarna. The first exception is hardly an exception at all. It's just that if the indefinite plural forms end with an n, then just add a. Hjärtan. Hjärtana. The second exception is if a noun isn't part of the first five declinations that inflect nouns, then the definite plural will end with an N, even if it's a T word. Golv. Golven. Hon. Honen. Möss. Mössen. Löss. Lössen. Let's take seven examples with nouns that we saw in the last episode, one from each declination. I will go through the singular forms first for all seven words, and then the plural forms, hopefully to help you see the pattern clearly. En blomma. Blomman. En pojke. Pojken. En ko. Kon. Ett äpple. Äpplet. En park. Parken. Ett hus. Huset. En höna. 
per none. All right, the plural forms. Blommor. Blommorna. Pojkar. Pojkarna. Kor. Korna. Äpplen. Äpplena. Parker. Parkerna. Hus. Husen. Höns. Hönsen. Easy enough. Let's complicate stuff. For this section I'm going to use the two example nouns, stol and bord, where stol is an n-word from the second declination and bord is a t-word from the sixth declination. Let's imagine a scenario where we would need to move around a bunch of chairs and tables, maybe to prepare for a dinner party, and use this to look at the words for this, that, here, there, these, and those. In Swedish, here is här, and there is där. This is den här for n-words and det här for t-words. A direct translation from Swedish to English would be something like the here or the there, but that obviously doesn't make grammatical sense. So let's look at the examples. Den här stolen. Den där stolen. Det här bordet. Det där bordet. One can omit här or där to get something that perhaps best resembles the structure of English. Den stolen. Det bordet. This is however used to denote a very specific item and it's not completely equivalent to the chair or the table. Uh, let's take an example. Move the chair. Which chair? That chair. Flytta stolen. Vilken stol? Den stolen. Usually this would be accompanied by body language for clarity. There's also an alternative to this, which is denna for n words and detta for t words. It's optional if you want to inflect the noun, it varies with dialect. Denna stolen. Detta bordet. When you use denna or detta, you can't use här, där. It's like saying the here, share. I will link in the description an excerpt from the Swedish dub of Lady and the Tramp where Tony the Cook makes exactly this error and the Tramp comments that Tony can't handle the language very well. So yeah, don't say denna där. What about plural? We saw earlier that if you inflect a plural noun to definite form, you don't have to care about the gender, we just add na. It's similar now. For plural, we use the word de, often pronounced dom. De här for these and de där for those. De här stolarna. De där stolarna. De här borden. De där borden. You can omit the here or there to get de stolarna. De borden. Let's look at an example. Bring the shares. These shares. Yes, those shares. Hämta stolarna. De här stolarna. Ja, de stolarna. And finally, the plural equivalent of denna, detta, which is dessa, 
and means these. Dessa stolarna. Dessa borden. As for singular, don't use här or där with dessa. So to wrap it up, let's look at all the inflections of our two example nouns, bord and stol. En stol. Flera stolar. Stolen. Stolarna. Den här stolen. Den där stolen. Denna stolen. De här stolarna. De där stolarna. Dessa stolar. Ett bord. Flera bord. Bordet. Borden. Det här bordet. Det där bordet. Detta bord. De här borden. De där borden. Dessa bord. Next time we will talk about genitive, which honestly is the easiest part of all this. See you next time. Thank you for watching.